Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out, folks. Our first order of business, approval of the minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read them? And uh, are there any changes that anybody thought needed to be made? No? Do I hear a motion to approve? I move. Second, anybody? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Did that brings us up to reports. Tammy, what do you have to report? <laughs> Hopefully I have a lot of great things to report. <laughs> it's all I can ever hope. Um, well, just to start off a little bit, uh, fall tends to be a busier time of year for us with a lot of programs taking place as well as a lot of really big events. Um, fortunately, the, the rains of October that uh, occurred perpetually uh, caused us to have to cancel and postpone our uh, fall harvest and great pumpkin patch event, not only once, but twice. And uh, so we are set up now for October 23rd to have the event, uh, which is, it's uh, not, yeah, it's still October, everybody's still thinking fall, so we're looking forward to a lot of success. It is our 10th year, so we're bound and determined to have it in some way. Um, so uh, we wanna give a, a huge thank you to Mainline Health who has been a huge sponsor for this event for many, many years. I uh, also want to announce to everybody that the large pumpkin registration that we have for residents is still open. So if you want to reserve a large pumpkin, you do have to do so online. It's free. There's no cost for it. So registration is still open for all the residents. And we have a lot of great activities that are going to take place. So sometimes when we postpone and postpone and postpone, we tend to lose activities, lose vendors, but we still have about 30 organizations and businesses taking place with us, taking part with us, coming, setting up tables, interacting. Uh, we have a lot of great activities. We have the tractor rides by our public works department that'll be going uh, up behind the Willows Mansion and taking folks and dropping them off so that they can go and experience the pumpkin patch, pick up their pumpkins. Uh, we also have the bull ride back again this year. Uh, we have the gem mining back again this year. Lots of music and great entertainment. We have a new ninja wall that we have that's gonna be Taken, taking place there, balloon-shaped artists taking place, um, organizations like Radnor Memorial Library and Radnor uh, or Wayne Art Center taking part with all kinds of fall-related arts and crafts activities. Uh, La Cabra, uh, which is a restaurant down in Bryn Mawr, is going to be participating with lots of great food. So we're really looking forward to uh, another good event, and uh, fingers crossed that we have good weather, not only leading up to the event so that the Willows is in, in good shape, um, but also just so that we have a great day and, and can have a terrific and successful event. So we'll be looking forward to that coming, uh, coming up. I also want to announce the free tree giveaway. You might have passed them on your way in uh, over by the M. Linton-L statue. Radnor Conservancy has their free tree giveaway October 15th and 16th, so registration I know is still open for that. You can access that from our website or you can access it from the Radnor Conservancy website. We also have an electronics recycling and shredding day uh, on Saturday, October 29th. That'll be at Radnor Financial Center, uh, led by Radnor Township. Uh, there is an online registration for that as well, so we have an event page set up on the radnor.com website where folks can go. Um, and that is a residence only free event uh, and an annual event, of course. It's very, very successful. The 45th annual Radnor Run will be taking place uh, on Sunday, October 30th. It starts and finishes right here at the Township Building. There's a five-mile run for the real serious runners. We have a one-mile timed walk slash run uh, for those who aren't quite as zealous to do the five-mile. And we also have a two-mile trail walk uh, that takes place as well, and that's in its second year uh, and something we're very excited about being able to have that back again, very popular. We have Santa's delivery registration that's gonna be taking place starting on November 1st. Uh, so we were informed by Santa, he is gonna be returning to Radnor Township this, um, this year in December again on December 4th, so we're excited to have that event back. Uh, we are looking for volunteer Santas, so if, you know, we need some helpers to, to join us, so we'll be looking forward to getting folks signed up. I think we might have one on this board who's potentially interested. <laughs> and he gives a great ho, ho, ho. 
<laughs> and it's in its 10th year as well, so another event um, crossing a major milestone. Uh, and then also just last Thursday, we had, uh, we had a nice, fun fall uh, preschool uh, hike along the trail. It was actually the, the Willow Spooktacular event. We did it in 2020. It was actually a COVID event for us where uh, we replaced the trick-or-treating at the township building with this event so that folks could be safe and have a good time out on the trails and, and not have to feel like they're you know indoors and passing germs and things along. But we decided to bring it back this year uh, and it was a huge success. We, it was last Thursday during the day at 12 o'clock uh, at noon. We had about 110 kids take place uh, with their families and they had an opportunity to go out on the Skunk Hollow Trail and search for lots of really cool Halloween hidden treasure, treasures and hidden words to come up with praises. Uh, they played Plinko for goodie bags and things like that. And again, Radnor um, Memorial Library and Wayne Arts Center took, place, uh, took part in the event as well. They were there placed at the event at the trailhead with us and had lots of goodies and activities and things for the kids. So it was really a nice little event on what was a very nice Thursday after, afternoon after I think six days of rain. Um, so that was a lot of fun. So just, I guess just to talk a little bit about pr uh, preschool programming, um, as you probably see in my, my reports every month, preschool programming is definitely a, a heart and soul of, of what we do and what we deliver. And in addition to the programs that we usually have, like soccer and t-ball um, and basketball and some of the other sports, we did add a preschool nature program that we partnered up with the Bureau of Forestry to deliver. We have two dates, uh, October 22nd and October 28th, where that's gonna be taking place. And so far, the, the participation is huge. Um, I think we have a little bit of room left. I know that they're close to filling. Uh, but something that's been really popular for us uh, each day is going to feature some different activities. One will be on like our acorn education and activities. Another is on leaves and leaves and you know different activities around leaves and things like that and activities and education. So we're excited about those um, those two new programs, which seem really popular. And just to make a note from. 2019 alone, we've seen about 50% growth in preschool programming alone. So it's definitely made a big impact with the community and something you know we want to keep keep offering and being creative um, in terms of the activities that we're putting out there. Um, another trend that we also saw, uh, just to note, um, based on some of the trends we're seeing in programming, is with our tennis programming. Uh, so nationally, uh, we're hearing a lot about trends in programming with tennis increasing, tennis play, um, folks participating in leagues and things like that at all levels. And we've actually seen some of the some similar growth here. As a matter of fact, our, our programs went from about 96 to 100 back in 2019. Now we have like 275 people across youth, teens, adults participating in tennis. Um, likewise, pit pickleball is huge. Uh, we continue to see lots of inquiries for pickleball. This year alone, we've had over 50 inquiries come in looking for clinics, leagues, tournaments, um, wondering when we're gonna build new courts, uh, all kinds of requests for pickleball, which we continue to try and meet that need with increased programs, leagues, tournaments, and some new clinics that we recently started. So we're really excited about that. I just wanna take a little bit of time and share some of those statistics with the board, because all of that you know, leads to growth increased marketing, communications, and, and lots of impacts on our departments, which is all, it's all really good stuff. Um, and it's great to see that folks are getting out and being active. Um, another update I just wanna give, just to transition a little bit to parks, because I know some of these items aren't directly on our agenda. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about the Enki Park project. Uh, we have a, a project that was authorized by the commissioners um, back in early summer to uh, replace the playground surfacing, uh, which we know is in some rough shape, and also in install the playground uh, sunshades over different portions of, this, of the, um, the playground. Uh, what, I, what I have learned is that there is a materials shortage, there's a staffing shortage, um, and apparently there have been major breakdowns in significant equipment that's required to manufacture a lot of the pieces um, that go along with the project that has unfortunately put it on hold. Um, I don't have a definite timeline yet of when that's going to be, but it's likely that it's not going to happen in the fall like we had hoped. Um, that was a project that we hoped was going on right this moment, um, but unfortunately was not able to get started. So we're going to try and 
hopefully pin down a schedule for that that has it starting in early spring before the temperatures get too warm um, because the requirement to be able to pour successfully and, and do the surfacing, you know, we don't want to be doing that in 80 degrees, 90 degrees, definitely could um, impair the system. So we want to try and get that done as late in winter as possible. So I'll, I'll be back with this board with an update as soon as I have one. Um, you know, in hopes that we can get that project completed in the spring as early as possible. Um, another item just to update the board about, I don't think there was any discussion on this in September, but this, there's a portion of the Skunk Hollow Trail that has been an issue. I know we talked about it at, at this board in early, early of the year when we were talking about capital projects. Um, there's an area of the trail that, that runs along the stream bank. I think everybody's familiar with it. I know it's hailed as the goat trail. It's very treacherous. It's slanted and sloping, and there's a lot of erosion and undercutting. There's a lot of trees and roots being exposed and compromised. And because there's no easy solution currently right now to repair that area and repair the stream bank, um, although it's something for consideration in the future, we have closed the trail down. Um, I, I know we've had a lot of feedback coming in from members of the public, so uh, myself and Steve Ledgerton, our park supervisor, our public works director, Rick Foster, and our risk management council, uh, Gallagher Associates, we met out there and we looked at the trail, we hiked the trail, and uh, thought it was best and was strongly recommended by them, uh, our risk management council, to shut the trail down, which we did. So for anyone who maybe has been out there, you would see that we have uh, a post and rail fence on the main portion um, when you enter from the Willows and travel west, and then we have another post and rail fence on the end of the trail, basically noting with signage that's clear to indicate that it's closed down, and then with a directional arrow pointing to the alternate route, because there is an alternate route that goes a little further up ahead. Um, and I know a lot of folks like to access the stream, and I know a lot of the dogs, I, every day I'm out there, there's lots of dogs bathing in the streams and having a good old time. Um, a lot of folks enjoy that. There's still access to get into the stream earlier on before you reach the area where the trail is closed down. Um, so I wanted to give the board that update. <clears throat> also another trail update, of two more trail updates. So one more uh, has to do with Monday night's Board of Commissioners meeting on Monday night the 17th. Uh, the Darby Paoli Trail project uh, will be presented as an update for the board and the Radnor uh, multi-purpose trail extension will be presented as an update also uh, of an evaluation of some of the items with regards to that project. So if you get a chance, tune in. If not, catch the replay um, just to keep up to date with, with what's going on with those two projects. And then last, uh, well, two more things. So lastly, on trails, um, there is a project that a scout is going to be taking on on the Skunk Hollow Trail to extend the boardwalk. I know we still have some muddy areas that exist out there uh, where it's rocky and unstable, and especially when it gets wet, it's wet and we have heavy rains for a long period of time, that area becomes unstable. So the boardwalk is going to be extended like another 60 to 90 feet. Uh, so that project's going to get started shortly, and it'll be done in small segments, like 12 to 15 feet uh, per time just to keep it clean, you know, as far as um, the scout being out there, getting the work done, and then if he has to, you know, weather or anything becomes an issue, at least the segments are, are, are in small enough segments that the whole area isn't left compromised, so it'll still be accessible. Um, and then my last update was just that the, the Township Board of Commissioners are discussing uh, right now the budget. Um, there's going to be budget presentations on Monday night from department heads. There's going to eva be a eva continued evaluation of capital. I know there's a significant amount of park projects that exist within our park's capital. So I want to encourage this board to continue to tune into those areas and segments of the meeting um, when possible, and then of course I can report back on any updates. And as al always, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know those. Thanks, Tammy. Any questions for Tammy on any of that? Great. Um, doesn't look like we have a board of commissioners rep here tonight, or a rather township school board. <laughs> rep so we won't have the, or uh, is anybody here to report on shade tree actually maybe Tammy you can update us on where we stand on the shade tree commission parks and rec overlap 
I think it's still under evaluation. Um, I know that there was some discussion going on uh, internally. Um, so I, I really don't have an update beyond that. I think it's um, something that's still being reviewed and there'll be an update back to this board soon on that. Thanks. Claire, were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any other reports? I don't see too many people around to give reports. All right. Any new business? I'm not aware of any. All right, let's move on to the oldies but goodies. Old business. Fenimore Woods Park Renovations Project, update and discussion. Um, Tammy, was there anything you wanted to say here? Is there anything new since the last meeting, which is a pretty comprehensive meeting on uh, getting input from the community on um, and coming up with some priorities and uh, a recommendation that was made to the Board of Commissioners. I don't know if uh, there's anything new uh, to report. Well, one of the things I can do is give an update. Sorry. Um, crickets. They'll never be crickets when I'm around. <laughs> um, so one of the things I can do is just give the update. I'll, I'll just basically verbalize the motion that was included in the, uh, the minutes that you have. And uh, I know there was a lot of discussion on September 8th. I wasn't here, but I, I did receive multiple updates from individuals who attended the meeting. Um, so I know that there was a lot of input. We had the room set up as a round table so that folks could pass around a microphone. And I know, Claire, you guided uh, and led a lot of discussion um, and led that meeting. So there was a motion that was made. It sounds like there were five uh, members of the board present. It was the recommendation of the Parks and Recreation Board that the following design elements were in, that would be included uh, in the updated Fenimore Woods reno Renovations Project design of which will be reported back to the Parks and Recreation Board for continued understanding of costs, progress, and review. And number one on that list was preservation of the current integrity of the park's amenities with the priority focus on not removing trees, the minimalist approach, of course, that has been talked about. Uh, renovate the stable building in place as a bathroom storage option, so not the community building that I know was presented as a second option. Renovate the pavilion and fix in, and or fix in place where it's currently located. Renovate or replace the playground in its current location, current sizing. And then ADA accessibility to the amenities uh, within the park, which we know uh, would be a priority. And I think it was discussed that for the pond access that there would be an accessible parking spot that would be located off of Shimoni Road in and around the area where the former rebed system was so that that access could be provided there. Um, so those were the, those sounded like those were the overriding goals and objectives. Um, I'm not sure if any of the board members has anything to add to that, uh, but what we've done is we've, we have met with both of the corresponding consultants. So there's the main consultant of the project, Gilmore and Associates, who've been overseeing the comprehensive improvements across the park. So they were part of the original design that you know, we've, we've flushed out. And there's also Gannett Fleming, uh, who had been tasked and presented to this board uh, the preliminary evaluation um, with regards to the engineering and design of the stable. So we've had conversations and meetings with both of those firms to discuss these goals and objectives um, and discuss where each of them sort of start and stop, if you will, so that their lines of delineation of which their task to design are very clear so we don't have overlap, because um, overlapping design means overlapping costs and the last thing we need on this project is any more costs doubling, of course, in overlapping areas. So right now those two firms um, met with myself and Steve Norsini, our township engineer, and they've been tasked to go back and put together the proposal for the final designs as well as an estimation of probable costs. So what will happen is when we get those proposals, which we currently do not have, um, the, the goal is that this board would be updated on what those look like, what those entail, and then they would go before the board of commissioners uh, to review for potential approval so that they can get started on the work. So if that happens and if the Board of Com Com Commissioners does authorize those proposals, um, one or both of them or both of them, then those respective consultants will get started on their work and they will, will start to engage 
what will be our next review of design, which will continue to come back to this board. Um, so those are, those are definite pieces um, that you will continue to see and members of the community will have a chance to continue to dialogue and you know, take part in if there you know, is any uh, input that's still needed throughout that process, you know, seeing preliminary concepts, seeing how the design then and the detail unfolds. Uh, so it, it, it won't be, it won't just be going to the board and the board of commissioners and not coming back to this board. This Parks and Recreation Board will continue to see the project as it unfolds. So, I mean, if I was anticipate timeline, uh, we're hoping to get to the board of commissioners with those proposals, definitely by the end of this year, um, hopefully in November. Um, I hope that's not wishful thinking. I hope it's something we can get soon and make sure it's ready to go and be presented there. And we'll let everyone know and the members who are on our interest list be aware when it goes before the commissioners so they have an opportunity to attend um, and provide the continued support um, and or you know, provide public comment you know, where applicable. Make sure members of this board is aware of that and that process. And then that design process I would anticipate would probably start in the new year. Um, and it's probably safe to say it's at least a good six to nine months, maybe longer. I, I don't wanna predict, I don't wanna draw a line in the sand on a timeline and knowing that you know we, we always have different variables that come up and come along the way. But I would imagine most of 2023 will be spent endeavoring that design and then having a final proposal of what that looks like that will go back for the board for the board of commissioners that is ultimately for approval to bid the project so that uh, you know we can hopefully anticipate construction. But I think there's a lot of checkpoints along the way. Um, and as the, the budget for the project continues to unfold, certainly is gonna require a lot of probably increased dialogue uh, as we go along. I know there's a lot of really great grant prospects that are out there. So we're gonna take advantage of those wherever we see those. Uh, we have an internal grant coordinator here with uh, the township, Melissa Kahn, and she would work closely with myself and or Steve for certain components that we could submit to make part of that. Um, you know, we know there's a lot of permitting, of course, that's gonna be included through the process as well. Just something that sometimes adds variables to the timeline. Uh, and as that starts to unfold, you know, we will keep this board abreast of all those developments. Yes. Go, go ahead, Claire. Um, thank you so much, Tammy, for all that information. I have a question about the um, budget fluidity, if you will. Um, so does, if the Board of Commissioners is evaluating budget for 2023, does this come up in that evaluation as to maybe change or, you know, as we're looking at grants and things, how does that work? The budget that the, the commissioners are reviewing right now is the 2023 budget. So because this design process and, and engineering process wouldn't get underway until 2023, those, are, those aren't numbers that they would have any idea about because right now the project is funded in the 2016 borrowing. So the approximately 1.6 million that we have available for this project right now is what we have available. If we learn that there's more that's needed or there's other variables to the project that need to be funded. So one example is um, we know that there is a pipe that comes from Cabrini. I think you had dialogue about that at the last meeting. So the pipe comes through the park on the other side of the playground. It goes through swale and then goes under the bridge. We know that pipe needs to be replaced. Um, Steve Norsini is currently looking at that more closely and the thought is, is that perhaps that is a, a component that could be funded by the stormwater fund. And if that's the case, the board would have to provide approval. Ultimately, the commissioners would have to provide that approval uh, to make that happen versus it being something that gets repaired, if replaced, I think it's a replacement that's needed based on what I understand so far, um, versus having that be something that's funded within the 1.6 million. I think that would definitely be desirable. I think if there's, other funds and other options that we can draw from, you know, to make certain projects happen. We definitely want to do that. But it probably wouldn't be until 2024 that we really, or the end of 2023, looking at the 2024 township capital budget that we would really know if there's any variables that 
we may, to see, may need to seek additional township funding for with regards to this project. Um, you know, the hope obviously is not, that's not the case because um, that's, I mean, you know, we have bonds that were borrowed specifically for this project. So maybe there's other considerations that will have to take place. Thank you, that's helpful. I just wanted to get clarity on that 1.6 as what we're working with for now um, as, as we go forward. Great. Anything else from the board? Any questions? Tammy, the Gannett folks uh, made a presentation back in July uh, about uh, initial designs uh, of the use, re, re renovating the stable. Um, is that pretty much on track now? Is that what we're, that's the go to? Um, from what I understand from the board's recommendation and the dialogue that was had with the community is that there was the desire to renovate the stable so that it could be preserved for bathrooms. Okay. Um, they would have some ancillary storage and access, but uh, I think it sounds like the option, which was I believe the option B, it was a second slide option to establish the facility as a community yes. center uh, doesn't sound like there was an appetite for that, not to mention that there was a very high uh, anticipated cost, cost behind it. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't want to keep people here late. Is there anybody here who wants to uh, weigh in on uh, Fenimore? Because I'll take public comment on that now rather than make you wait. Good evening. I'm Jim Higgins. I live in the Third Ward. I was a, on the Board of Commissioners for a total of 14 years. Um, two things. Uh, Tammy, on the pipe that's uh, apparently from Cabrini University, is that, or is it from, um, is it from, can I, can I address her? Oh, yeah, Sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> is that um, from our um, sanitary sewer system, or is it from Cabrini's? sanitary sewer, sewer system. I believe it's a stormwater pipe that's compromised. Oh, it's, it's stormwater, okay, so it's ours. Um, the other, and I should have said this first, I'm really encouraged and I think a lot of members of the community are encouraged by what you've done as a board to uh, work on Fenimore Woods, to keep it as it is, but upgrade those areas that need to be upgraded, so thank you very much. And switching to another thing that you mentioned, uh, the Darby Paoli Trail. I'm just wondering what's going on with that. You know, our board, going back about eight years, acquired 70.1 acres there to preserve forever um, from the family trust of the uh, Montgomery Scott um, family. And um, are we, are, what, what, what's going on with that, with the, those 70 acres? I know there's been a project underway uh, that was actually authorized as part of the, the borrowing as well, I believe in 20, late 2015, um, that included funding towards establishing um, parts of those parcels as a trail of like a 1.3 uh, mile loop uh, from the willows all the way through um, the parcel, each of the parcels and then back again. So that's something that has been an under design um, by our design firm and the update on, on where that is right now and some of the anticipated costs I know is gonna be presented on Monday night by the consultant. Mm -hmm. So it's just informational only for the board at this, to at this point, the, the meeting on Monday night, it's an informational meeting. Uh, there's not any direction that's going to be sought. But the plan is to keep it in its natural state. Yes. As much as possible. And, and install the trails to be able to allow for the public access. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Tammy, could I ask a question? Um, with, the, with, that tr with the trail extension you mentioned, will that be back before us then eventually? It will. Um, I know that there's some, for the trail extension, I know there's some immediate areas that on Monday night are being sought for direction um, that include how the arsenic and some of the soils um, in the trail extension area would be mitigated. So there's a couple options of that. And then an option for how the trail will cross Darby Paley Road. There's four options that'll be evaluated um, that some more immediate direction was needed 
um, on how to go forward with the project. So once that's understood, the, the final presentations and evaluations will come back to this board. From what I understand, I know uh, Steve Norsini and Dennis uh, Capella with our engineering department have been heading up that project with those consultants. So I know we've been in conversation about the importance of making sure the Parks and Recreation Board is you know, kept involved in terms of how that moves forward. Um, and then just understanding if there's any critical decision making or recommendations that, are, that might be needed that you guys would be involved in those. On up. My name's Doug McCone. I live on Poplar Avenue. I just wanted to say you're doing a fabulous job, especially a very, very good job with respect to Fenimore Woods. I'm very pleased to see what you're doing. We'll see what it ends up with, but it looks <laughs> very good so far. Thank you. Anybody else on Fenimore? Good move on. Okay. Odoricio Park improvements. Can you give us an update on that, Tammy? Yes, uh, Odoricio Park is um, a project that's continuing to move along uh, with there's a lot of aspirations for some great renovations to take place at the park. Uh, we had uh, some dialogue in a, uh, we had a town hall meeting just to kind of go back to May to sort of recap a little bit. Um, it was a meeting that took place at the Radnor Township Civic Association. Uh, we had a pretty good turnout. I think we had like 15 folks attend. Um, it was a beautiful night though, so we didn't have nearly as many as I think we would have if we had it on a night like tonight, um, which we keep looking ahead, of course, to more meetings. We also had a walking meeting with neighbors um, at the park on September 21st. Uh, we had a good group in attendance. I think we had about 10 or so. We had a couple organization representatives from Radnor Wayne Little League and, and Wayne American Legion Baseball attend, um, as well as some residents uh, who were there as well. And we got to hear some additional input about the park, um, which I can give a quick recap. Um, I don't think we're dropping anchor on anything just yet in terms of what we're doing at the park, but we are continuing to get a lot of really great ideas. So not only did we hear some great things back in May, but we heard some great things um, on uh, Wednesday the 21st as well, back in September. We heard about the parking capacity. There was, uh, it was good to get some input from Radon Wayne Little League and, and the American Legion because we heard that the parking capacity currently works. And although there's a need to reorganize it in some way uh, and maybe consolidate it in some other ways, we heard that it works for the current events that are happening at the park. Um, of course, that would be given that you know, the fact that there was you know, changes to the park, you know, maybe that would be something we would want to reevaluate if we had some input to think about changing or adding amenities. But for the current situation of the park, it, it works. The bathroom uh, needs to be replaced. We heard the, a want for replacement, a new structure, something more inviting, something that looks like a bathroom and not a box. Um, like the bathroom does and is often misconstrued as just a storage center and, and not a bathroom at all, quite frankly. And also that it would be appealing to have some covering space so that folks could, um, they could sit up above, watch the games under an overhang, have some picnic tables, maybe not quite as big as Fenimore Woods, but something um, a little bit, a little bit bigger than maybe what is at Emlyn Tunnel right now. I think that was that was kind of what we heard, but something that could accommodate some groups to sit and watch, and have the covered space, and obviously be shielded from the sun. Um, renovation of the playground. Um, there was an interest in uh, some baseball-related uh, improvements with regards to dugouts, a storage shed behind the backstop and some steps coming down off the first baseline side that currently they're on the only on the other side, uh, if, especially if the parking is gonna continue to be in that location, which I know is just something comprehensively we, we wanna look at. Um, fencing at the player benches was raised as an issue, as a safety concern, being too low um, for what is traditionally our, our larger, taller, you know, 13, 14 year old plus players. So there was, a, there was a request to not only raise the height of the fencing across the player in the front of the player benches, but also extend it down the line a little bit more, which seems like a valid, a valid request um, in terms of that, you know, 
there's a safety concern at that level, we definitely would want to address it. Um, power access of the field was something that was desirable. We heard from some of the residents to remove the bleachers. They're not used. Uh, the seating that's up above with some of the benches and things like that that are allocated are sufficient and that potentially the bleachers aren't actually used because it gets too hot, you know, given the steel seating and all of that that's there. So that's something we can obviously look at and continue to have dialogue on. Um, some of the other issues were related to the ingress and egress of the park from Church and Fairview Road and Highland Avenue. So, bless you. So even if they're not in the park proper, it's something that probably is worthwhile for consideration, maybe taking a closer look at how it might tie into the project with regards to sidewalks and accessibility. Uh, there was even some discussion about maybe creating uh, church and Fairview as a one way in, one way out, which is something that I have starting to be evaluated by our staff traffic committee, um, just to see if that's even possible, what some of the objectives would be there to maybe make that happen. Seems like a valid uh, I idea and thought to start to discuss. And then there was also uh, some concerns about Highland Avenue, um, the traffic, ingress, egress, um, a lot of kids not being able to sort of like get to the park safely because of the high amount of traffic. And we had talked about too, like some of this ties back to the address of the park being identified as Fairview Avenue. I know at one point, like I was a, a visiting team with my family on a personal level and everybody goes right to Fairview Avenue to access the park and not to West Wayne Avenue, which is where the main parking lot is. So that's something that we have underway. We're trying to figure out how we can correct and sort of change that, um, that norm that's been created. The woods were discussed. Not everybody was in support of creating trails and accessibility throughout the woods. Some people I think still were. We've heard sort of a mix of that. But there definitely was a consensus to clean up the trails, so maybe there's some efforts that could get underway, you know, even sooner versus later on that, and who knows, we could maybe dovetail them into more discussions and more meetings on the park. But overall, I think folks are really passionate about the space. They want to see renovations, recognize it's a, it's a beautiful space, and just really wanting to take the steps to, to make it better. Um, I'm probably missing some things, Claire. I know that you were there. Um, I know, like I said, some of these things we're trying to get underway, like under staff traffic, to see if we can incorporate some of the changes with regards to accessibility. We do have two grants that we've submitted for the project already for planning and design. Uh, one went in just this past Friday to the, Del the Delco Greenways for $100,000, which was exciting to write the grant because there's just so many great points that this part ties to with regards to the Delaware County planning with regards, to, with regards to transportation and greenways and parks. And then there's a Pico Green Region grant that we submitted for $10,000. So a um, little bit of money to try to get to apply towards the planning because as we know, those costs you know only continue to get higher and the more of them that we can defray with grants, the more we have left when ultimately we start to consider what construction might be. Um, so I don't know if you had anything to add, Claire, but that was that was kind of the summary. I know there was more that was talked about back in May, but I wanted to focus a little bit more on what we heard at the September event. Um, I would say, Tammy, you really hit all of the key points that we talked about that night. The only thing I might add is that we talked about the safety of the sledding. So, you know, where the stairs would be um, from that upper parking lot to make sure that those kinds of things were incorporated in the design to accommodate sledding, even with traffic and things. So that was one another um, thing that brought up was brought up. But other than that, I think you hit them all. So I would just encourage folks, um, if you're not already on our interest list, to come out and take part in meetings. Please join the interest list. I know I had conversations with a couple people at the park that don't have email, so I got their phone numbers and I let them know that I would call them when we have meetings that that come available. So that's definitely an option for folks uh, if they don't communicate by email or you know, looking at social media or the township website. So I think it's really important that we get as many people wired into the project as possible because I think that can consider can continue to help it facilitate and move along so we can hear feedback, hear ideas. And then ultimately, I think we're gonna be in a position where we're gonna want to probably start to engage 
uh, a firm, you know, and do some research, and um, you know, start to put a, like get a consultant together to get a proposal on what it would be to start to put some of these elements together. Great. Um, just one question. I, I know the basketball court's been done and everything. I was wondering that the 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 one end where the parking lot is butted up against the basketball court. Is there any um, discussion or anything about raising that fence there? Because I've I've been out there once or twice and I've seen the ball just go, you know, just bounce right over that fence. I, I think there was, but I'm not sure. That, well, I discussed that with some folks on site at the end of the meeting. A couple of us stayed back and we talked for a little while. And um, the solution, I think, for that is to put up a drape netting on the sides of the backboard. Uh, this way the ball doesn't go high. Because I think either way it's going to bounce over fe fencing. Even if we move it up, the I don't know what the distance is um, you know, in terms of the grade that goes down. I think no matter what we do, the ball is going to still bounce over the, fetting, the, fen I'm sorry, the fencing. The, the post and rail fencing, because it's only going to come up another foot or so, we'll say, give or take. So because that construction's all been done, I think the answer is to put a netting system on the backboard to the side and down, like a commercial grade netting system. And folks seem to be pretty enthusiastic about that as an option to stop the ball from, from bouncing. Anything else on Odorisio? Okay. Uh, concerns about dogs. Um, Tammy, have we gotten any new um, input information on dog issues in um, the Willows Park, the Skunk Hollow Trail? I haven't had any recently, but um, once we start to get a little more focused, I think, on where our, our meetings are going to line up publicly on those, I want to start to compile that so we can all take a look at it and see what we've gotten to date. But nothing has come in recently. OK. Um, one thing I noticed, because I'm over there so often, is um, the sort of post and yellow chain um, fence, if you want to call it that, um, that we put up a couple of months ago between uh, the Willows Mansion and the meadow above Skunk Hollow Community Garden has been down, detached, broken. I don't know, you know, what it is, but it's not there. And um, vegetation is sort of overgrown where the posts are, so it's 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 almost easy to to you know, not see anything there at all. Um, and whatever it might have just been that temporary sign that was attached to that yellow chain um, doesn't seem to be anywhere. The the other the standing sign, the metallic sign. Uh, directing people to that other trail that's still there but otherwise it's it's open so it's not serving its purpose we'll take a look at it yeah. i'll actually go by there tomorrow and take a look at yeah. it and okay. see yeah. what we can I do i mean it's right there yeah and I, I guess that's been that way for several weeks now um uh and that's and other than that again being over in skunk hollow and the willow so often the situation seems to be and, and other guys can jump in here too on the board seems to be the same in terms of you know what what how many dogs are off chain uh, uh, off leash and you know how often there are incidents either you know dogs interacting with people who don't want to interact with dogs or dogs interacting with dogs uh, or, or other you know um, let's say sanitation issues <laughs> involving dogs um, I don't know if uh, anybody on the board wants to add anything there yeah, I'll just add a personal anecdote. I was over there a couple weeks ago on a Sunday morning for a walk and had a couple dogs uh, decide to climb up on me, uh, off leash, of course, par um, parents. <laughs> <laughs> Owners nowhere to be found. Um, uh, aside from that, no nothing else, but uh, add me to the list of uh, unpleasant uh, encounters. Uh. Anybody else? So we'll get into this in you know more in a more comprehensive way in the future, uh, perhaps with a dedicated meeting on this, uh, at this point looking like in the next year. So, okay. Uh, Park and Recreation Board member, Park Steward Program. Um, this is the place where we um, provide any input on uh, things that should be reported in the parks that we are each stewarding. 
Does anybody have anything to report for their particular park? Claire, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, there we go. Um, I actually just wanna give a shout out to, I had asked Ricky and his team to attend to some of those new trees that were pr planted in the Friends of Radnor Trail. Um, and one of them was taken out, but they have been, you know, there was fencing around them that had been overgrown, and I don't know how, if you've been over there in a while, um, but it is so much better. And it really had, seems like those trees, those, those little saplings we put in, what, two, were those two seasons ago? Three. And they finally are starting to really take <laughs> off. Um, and so I was really pleased to see um, that, you know, and I'd love to see some more be put in there as well um, as a place um, to keep adding to. So, but looks great. Good. And all my other parks are good. Good, good. I'm sorry, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, um, Tammy, is there any, um, is there gonna be anything done to the Ithing Creek uh, Park br uh, Bridge, the one that's currently closed? It's currently under design and okay. engineering right now, so it will be evaluated as soon as they, they get a design together for construction. Um, I just had some input on uh, the willows. Uh, there was some painting, sprucing up of the uh, sort of the main gate area to the Willows Park, which vast improvement. I mean, I'm actually getting comments on it from people. I mean, it's not, it, it wasn't the grandest, uh, you know, uh, like a construction project or anything like that, but <laughs> the painting really made such a difference. It, it really looks so much better now. Um, so so that's, that, that was a good thing. Um, and the other thing for my park, Skunk Hollow, there are, um, and I was just there yesterday and the day before, uh, two trees down. Um, I don't know how long they've been down because it had been a little bit of time before I had got there this past week. Um, one is very, relatively small and it's not really obstructing anything. It might obstruct a, a, you know, a more fragile hiker or something. Um, relatively close to the mansion. And then another larger tree that would be difficult for a small child or maybe an older person or someone who's you know, not as sturdy to get over. And that's a lot closer to where the trail starts to, um, where the grade starts to go down towards Darby Creek where the, where the new steps are that the Boy Scouts put in is sort of just before that steep decline. Um, not the most critical thing, but um, in the, the next time a crew is in that area with chainsaws, um, you know, it would probably be uh, a good idea to get them uh, removed or just, or at least that those sections that are lying across the trail to get cut out and, and what have you. I'll talk to Steve about that. Yeah. We'll get them out there as Again, soon as they can. Not the biggest emergency in the world, but it w I can see how it could obstruct certain walkers um, or you know maybe small children or whatever. Anybody else, anything to report on theirs? Okay. Public participation, I think the public has all gone home. <laughs> so unless uh, there is anything else, uh, do we really need a motion to adjourn or can we just adjourn? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, anybody would like to move that we adjourn? Claire would like to so move. <laughs> And Bill would like to second. On all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy.